Hi, I'm Darren from Isotonic Studios and welcome to this first in a series of videos where I explore a new live performance setup that I'm building that's based on using Serato DJ and Ableton Live. Now I'll be utilizing Ableton Live's link uh, functionality to keep the tempo synced between the two. And my intent is that Ableton Live becomes the third deck. Effectively, I've got a set here which is based on having loops and uh, recognizable bass lines from other tunes, acapellas, stabs, speeches, and some whole tracks as well. Now you've probably watched a few of these videos now and you, you've seen this desk before, but it does actually hide a secret. Let's have a look. The only way my wife would let me have the decks back in the front room was if they were in a piece of furniture. So now, Friday night, pull up a bar stool, glass of wine, I'll get out Serato, DBS vinyl, play the tunes via the Rain 72, and now I'm starting to add Ableton Live to the setup as well. Now I've bought the Rain 72 and I probably haven't yet really grasp all of its functionality, but the intent was to replace my setup which had uh, dices and a launch pad and a set of dials, etc. And this pretty much does it all in one thing. I use the laptop to display Serato, which means I can't really see what's going on with my live set. And that's where this product from Sigaboard comes in. Now, if I just close this up for a moment. If you've watched the previous video on Clipex Macrobat, you will have seen how I've set up the master track uh, if we have here, to have a set of Macrobat receiver racks. So I've got one here for bass, uh, mid, high, gain, etc. Let's go back to the bass one. Now they're replicated on each track. So for example, the bass here, which is at zero, if I turn that up to full and we go to track one, the isotonic DJ rack there actually is being controlled by the rack that's on the master track. So now that's at, that's at full, let's turn it back to half and go to the master. And as you can see, I now have bass or EQ control across the eight tracks. I do that for mid, high gain, reverb, fade to distort. I've got a low pass and I've got a high pass as well. The bit that's missing is my session view. Now it'd be amazing if Ableton came out with a standalone version of Ableton Live. Um, I've played with the Akai Force and it's getting there, um, but for the moment I still love the power of the push with the laptop and being able to control things. As you can see, I've used some rudimentary color coding, but I don't know what these clips are. And I personally never got on with using the iPad to trigger clips. It just wasn't, in my workflow, I prefer the, the, the kinesthetic touch of the push, if you like. What I also have on the master track is P2D, which is push to display session. It's from Sigaboard, he's the first guy that actually managed to hack into the push display. And what this does, if I press shift and select, is it takes over the push to display and represent on the screen the clips that are contained within the 8x8 grid. I can navigate around the grid and the display will update. And if I trigger a particular clip, you'll see that its progress is tracked on the screen as well. Now, because I've installed the extra library component that comes with the download, uh, and if we just quickly show you that, it's very simple to do. Uh, I'm on a Mac, so I go to Applications, Ableton Live 10 Suite, Show Package comment, Contents, Contents, Push 2, Push 2 Display Process App, Show Package Contents again, and this file here, the libusb-1.0 dlib snappy title, is replaced by the one that's provided in the download. There's detailed instructions in the manual, it takes a couple of seconds, and what that does is it gives me further options for the display. I've actually got it set to overlay eight uh, for when I'm in session mode, but I can set it to full so it takes over the whole screen. I personally like overlay eight because it leaves the titles of my 
devices on the track so I can have that EQ control and it also gives me the titles of the other tracks as well. What you'll notice if I, uh, if I go to one is that the screen momentarily goes back to the standard. In fact, if I hold any of the encoders, it will do the same. And when I release, it jumps back. Now within the device itself, let's just go back to the master, you can choose how long it takes after release. I've got it pretty snappy at 200 milliseconds for the display to come back to show your session clips. You can also toggle between when you touch the encoders, just seeing the encoder that you're touching, or as I had it set up previously, you see them all. There are some other features within here. You can use the track color and the scene color to highlight what's in particular focus on the screen. Uh, you can set the font size, let's, uh, let's make it massive. That's probably as I may have it, certainly in the dark. Uh, and you can set the justification. I set mine left because most of my clips are, are quite lengthy in name. So now I've got DVS vinyl, playing my tracks, my third deck with full EQ control across all eight tracks at the same time. And I've got a visible screen showing me what clips to play next. It's just this thing to bring into the mix next. And hopefully in the next video, we'll be diving into the MIDI Fighter Twister. In fact, I've got a couple of those and I'll be looking at how to dynamically map those. So wherever I am in the set, they give me a wealth of FX to play with as well. Thanks for watching. Cheers.